Thank you very much, Jennifer, <laughs> and, and thank you to the organizers. It's great to be here. Apologies for, for arriving a little late. I had some connection challenges earlier this morning. I'm actually calling from Scotland, um, from, a, from a, a, a wee fishing village on the East Coast. So um, I, I work for IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature. And I must say, um, I think we work in one of the most exciting fields of human endeavor. That is the quest to create ecological cities, to actually create an ecological civilization. I, for one, am extremely excited to be working in this field. It's also an exciting time within IUCN because our union of 1,400 members has come to realize that we cannot possibly achieve our vision of a just world that values and conserves nature without the full and active cooperation of cities. So that's why we're doubling down on urban development. And this is evidenced by the creation of the Urban Alliance, a broad coalition of IUCN constituents concerned with urban dimensions of nature conservation. It's also why our members voted to create a new membership category specifically for local and subnational governments, paving the way for cities and regions to have their voices heard in the heart of the conservation community. And I'm going to just present, uh, I hope this works. Yes, I'm going to present a number of tools, but our general approach is very much in line with this, uh, this quote of Le Corbusier, which is to present solutions, to show uh, a more compelling and, and positive uh, alternative trajectory for human development. That's very much at the heart of what IUCN does. Um, and one of the tools we have been developing recently for cities is called the, uh, the IUCN Urban Nature Index. This comprises 30 indicators nested across six themes. And it's essentially a tool for helping cities to evaluate their ecological performance, set science-based targets and measure progress accordingly. By enhancing environmental transparency and accountability, by facilitating goal setting, this Urban Nature Index aims to catalyze local action for nature. I should just pay tribute to Arcadia, which is a fund, a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin that has actually funded this development work. And also to some of the cities that have helped us to develop this. Um, many uh, contributing cities, but I should mention the pilot cities. So Curitabat, Lagos, Mexico City, Paris, Singapore, Singapore National Parks Board, and, and Saanich, they helped us a, a great deal in, in, in developing this. So what differentiates the Urban Nature Index from other tools available to cities, and I know there are many, is the unique scope and framing. And we've really tried to, to create a niche that, that is complementary to some of the other tools that you will know about, such as the Singapore Index on Cities Biodiversity, which we have also helped to develop and, and, and fully support. But the IUCN Urban Nature Index um, recognizes the, the, the fact that cities have impacts far beyond their boundaries. And so it addresses three realms, urban, bioregional, and global. It also recognizes that cities are incredibly complex and, and dynamic systems. And so we've adopted the DPSIR framework, drivers, pressures, state impact responses. That's rooted in systems ecology, and it really gets to the, the root cause of ecological problems. So these are the indicators. I mean, this is a very crude summary. Uh, there, there's much more detail available, um, but this is pretty much how we've structured it. And at the recent IUCN Congress, the World Conservation Congress in Marseille, our members adopted the Marseille Manifesto, which comprises a commitment to expand universal access to green space and to enhance urban biodiversity in a hundred cities for a hundred million citizens by 2025. And we're going to assess progress using this urban nature index. So we have big plans to roll this out globally next year. Um, I want to also just mention the Panorama Solutions Portal. Uh, in cooperation with the World Bank, uh, about one year ago, we launched this new thematic community on sustainable urban development. It now comprises hundreds of inspiring, impactful, and scalable solutions drawn from across the conservation and development sector. Uh, these include, for instance, the establishment of water funds to restore catchments around drought-stricken cities. Uh, the use of land value capture to finance sustainable transport infrastructure. I think I'm straying a bit from urban forestry here. Um, also the retrofitting of schools to ensure earthquake readiness. The, the creation of 
pollinator habitats on high-rise rooftops, and downtown bio-blitzes involving scores of citizen scientists. Perhaps my favorite is this. It's an initiative in the city of Antwerp called Breakout. One of our former interns, Amelie Kleissens, was working on this. And essentially the, the city government worked with local NGOs to, to provide citizens with native tree saplings in return for paving slabs, essentially breaking out biodiversity in the heart of the city. A beautiful initiative. So we would encourage you to visit Panorama, explore, get inspired, share your work, reflect on your work and connect with others, learn from others who are also very active on this platform. It's a multi-partner initiative. So the World Bank and IUCN manage the urban portal, but there are many other portals there as well on culture, agriculture, business, you name it. Um, okay, it would be amiss of me not to mention the global standard for nature-based solutions. You may have heard of this. This is a, a, a set of nine criteria with associated indicators that seeks to essentially um, uh, ensure the credibility and quality of nature-based solutions design and deployment. And we are encouraging cities to use this. Already it has been assessed in uh, I think 18 cities in the Mediterranean region and we would love to roll it out also in Asia Pacific region. And the final tool I want to mention, this is Making Nature City. So some of you may be familiar with this report. It's a fantastic report. And, and uh, we are now working with Google and the San Francisco Estuary Institute to digitalize it as a toolkit. This will be launched next year. And essentially it, it lays out or conveys seven elements for building urban biodiversity. I won't go through all of them in great detail, but some, some are quite obvious actually. It's not rocket science, but you know, enhancing connectivity, increasing patch size, improving habitat management, um, planting native species, conserving special resources like old heritage trees, and of course, um, enhancing the matrix. So look out for that next year. Uh, I'm very excited about it. It's essentially a, a, an education product that will hopefully uh, foster ecological literacy among urban planners. Um, so thank you very much. And, and if you want further information about the Urban Alliance, please do visit our website.